Charlie, um, tell us about yourself. Sure. So, uh, uh, passion for Porsche from an early age, thanks to my father, who uh, who was a marshal at a local racing circuit, and uh, his passion was Porsches. Uh, he only ever had a 912, and that was before I was even born, but was always a member of the Porsche club. Wherever we, we went, I was taught to spot 911s and soon be fell in love myself. Um, went off to study industrial design at uni because mother said, I don't want you to be a grease monkey. But the passion eventually uh, won and uh, I began working for a Porsche specialist locally to here, um, dealing in all these water-cooled cars over 10 years ago now. So got to learn an awful lot about them. Um, then went on to work for another specialist, Paul Stevens, where uh, got involved with all the air-cooled cars because I'd kind of bought and sold so many of these. I thought, oh, this air-cooled era is before my time. I want to learn more about it. And I've got a real secret passion for the air-cooled cars now. I really enjoy them, their simplicity, their build quality. You know, they were they were made of proper stuff back in those days, whereas this was the era when Porsche knocked on the door of Toyota and said, hey, guys, you know, and Subaru, you've been building bo water-cooled boxer engines for ages. They asked for help and they also asked help for their lean manufacturing processes so they ran for the first time ever two cars side by side the boxster and the 996 that shared components and so all of a sudden they went from hand crafting these beautiful 911s and like the 928 we looked at earlier that was supposed to actually take take over from the night it was just too expensive to produce it was just you know all round not the best move that they made similarly the 964 at the time that was a time when Porsche were really stuck and I think it was this this water cooled era that saved Porsche mm. really because mass producing the parts loads more injection molded parts you know machines taking over from hand people hand painting and mm. things it, it just it changed the dynamic a lot of the company but so, so give yeah, us some then, advice for a first time 911 buyer that's looking to maybe not spend a whole lot of money mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for his first Porsche buy the probably buy the best possible car you can and make some compromises so you know so many people have got their heart set on I want a black 911 it's I've wanted one of them all well yeah we all would love a black 911 maybe or a gray one but ultimately don't get your heart set on just a color because you'll you'll fall in love with the first shiny black one that yeah. you find and it might be at the right price it might be a bit high price but ultimately you need to carefully inspect every car you look at and make some compromises oh it's black and it's got black yeah. interior but oh it hasn't got the lights that I wanted but well if it's a lovely car li live with the options that you're missing so here you know everyone wants well the sat nav you can kind of not worry too much about because it's so out of date and old now in the UK you can't even put a postcode in it so don't worry about the sat nav Lightronic headlights, I must admit, is a nice option because there's two things you want in any sports car. It's good music and good headlights. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so having the Bose, having the, the Lightronics, okay. I think are two of my favorite options because you've then got, you know, a, a nice package. But and Tell us about this fine example of a 996. So, yeah, so this is really unusual. I've known this car from day one. I helped the guy choose some of the options on it. Um, we, uh, I knew he wasn't going to use it a lot, so we chose just, just the right amount of bits. We had it Armour Friend protected, which is the paint protection film from new. And as I said to you earlier, he's struggled to do 800 miles a year in it since then. And it's now uh, 15 years later time that he's gonna get into something else. Um, we've gone and retrieved it from his garage where it's lived all of its life under a cover. And it's covered- How many miles? 8,900 8, miles uh, to, to date. Um, it's been serviced 10 times. It's never had a panel painted. The wheels have never been refurbished. It's still on its original Michelin tires, which amazingly still have quite a bit of tread. Unbelievable. They're probably hard as concrete now, and I wouldn't want to travel too far on them, but it's now falling into that collector car quality. And it's, it's an interesting example. It's helped us, yeah. you know, understand the values of where the water cords are gonna go, right. because you couldn't restore a car really to this condition right. and this standard for much less than 50 grand if you wanted to totally rebuild yeah. the engine totally retrim the interior totally strip and repaint the body renew the lights renew the brakes renew the suspension you could spend 50k 
in a heartbeat. You know, the, the, the engine rebuilds are, are good engine rebuilds, you know, around the 8 to 10K mark alone. And this currently is on your website for yeah, about we've, how much? We've, uh, we've got this car up at 49995 so it's probably one of the more expensive C4Ss ever or, or out there, certainly. Um, there is a couple of other cars. One's coming up at auction soon with some friends of ours at Silverstone Auctions. Similar mileage, similar story similar conditions so we're going to be interested to see what that makes and then there's an x51 power upgrade cabriolet at another dealer up to 55 so the x51 um, is the different engine yeah so it's um yeah i've had a couple of cars with x51 it was a standard option on the anniversaries um and at the time and we looked at this option for this car when he ordered it at the time it was i think a seven or eight thousand pound upgrade and it gave you i believe all of 25 horsepower and everyone kind of went seven or eight thousand yeah. for 25 horsepower when everyone was sort of used to like all oh, just get a remap done with well, the differences where you'd get aluminium inlet manifolds the cylinder heads were different the mat exhaust manifolds are different i think there was there was there was quite a number of changes and that brought the cars up to 340 horsepower i think and that's only 20 less than a gt3 so when you drive one of these x if you can find one yeah. they're really hard to okay. come by it's phenomenal. The torque and the power delivery is so much different to a standard car. Even though it's only 25 brake horsepower, all of those components combined make for almost a you know, GT3 right. performance in a car. So that would be an option if you ever find yeah. an X51, you know, that's where you make a compromise. Okay. If it's stone chipped and the right. wheels need refurbing, you go, I don't care because that was a seven grand option. I'll, I'll spend my money on refurbishing the aesthetics. So. And I have to ask, because the internet is just ablaze with everybody complaining about IMS bearings. Yep, if they yep. came to you and they said, hey, Charlie, I want to replace my IMS bearing. I just got this you yep. used example of an on 11 i want to be safe and replace it how much would that set them back so it depends what bearing they choose there's there's quite a range now of bearings we're quite favoring the eps bearings at the moment we think they're a really good product i've fitted numerous eps bearings to us they work out around i think it's about the 500 pound plus back marks around 600 quid ln engineering were leading the game for a long time and they still are to a degree developing amazing products they even do the oil fed bearing we talked about earlier yeah. but again the price starts creeping up and up and right. up and up um i tend to fit the eps bearing for people i mean <laughs> you're there you've got the gearbox out the clutch and the flywheel are sat there right. so that's a conversation that's always worth having we've just had an engineering firm make a load of lightweight flywheels for us because uh -huh. We've just yeah. been trying to explore the alternate options. Works out cheaper than a dual mass. And yeah. going forward, you'll never have to change the flywheel again. Yeah. So next time you need a clutch, it's just a clutch plate. Um, but yeah, if someone came in and said, I just want the uh, IMS bearing changed, nothing else. Um, it usually works out from us, who are a bit cheaper than the others, around the eleven or twelve hundred pound mark. That's amazing. Using the EPS bearing, so well, well under two thousand dollars. Oh yeah, under yeah. eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, to no, quick translation, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Now okay. we've 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 invested in all the tooling. When I first started doing them, I did charge a bit more because I'd had to invest yeah. a couple of thousand in in the tooling and you know getting the hang of doing them, but. You know, it's cool. We've done so yeah. many now for us. It's, it's so, Charlie, if they wanted to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? How um, do they find you? So, uh, yeah, we're a bit elusive to find because mm -hmm. we haven't done huge amounts of advertising yet. 911 and Porsche World have just found us, so they've done a few features recently. Um, jumping onto our website, williamfrancis.com, uh, you'll see the selection of cars and our contact details on there. Uh, we're also on Instagram occasionally when we get some oh. time to take some yeah. pictures, which is at WFP911. Okay. Um, major other, city, closest major city? Closest major city is Cambridge, or we're, we're also quite close to Ipswich, which is Excellent. a town, um, but only about an hour and a half from London and okay. an hour from Stansted Airport. So well, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, we have clients that do fly in from all over the world, which is always, always fun. So, well, uh, excellent. Charlie, yeah, thanks for yeah. talking to us. No problem.